How powerful a car can you buy for £10,000? Well, in my last video, I proved that you could get some pretty powerful cars for under £20,000. Today, let's do it under 10 instead. All six of these cars have more than 400 brake horsepower. Most of them have got more than 500 brake horsepower. If you want to see the same video at under £5,000 instead, hit the like button, a thousand likes, and I'll make that video. Subscribe to everything new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> It's always nice to get a luxury car into one of these lists and we're going right to the top of the Lexus food chain with this one, the LS600H, a proper full-size luxury saloon which was built as the brand's answer to the Mercedes S-Class. In fact, specifically the S-Class that I showed you in the 20k version of this video. Make sure you go check that one out if you haven't already. But this car comes with a 5 litre V8 engine with electric power too to make a combined 439 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.1 seconds, not particularly quick. But but then the reason for having all that engine is that it's never put under insane levels of stress so you can waft along in real luxury. And that's backed up by the fact that one, it's known to be very reliable which is always a positive and two, from a luxury perspective, this was the single most expensive saloon produced in Japan at the time of release with a list price of $125,000 which would have been just over £100,000 in adjusted for inflation UK money, insane for a Lexus. Now though, these are only around £7,000 at the bottom end and 10k will get you into a 2007 model with 92,000 miles on the clock. But honestly, I don't think you want to drive one of these, you want to be a passenger in the rear, given long wheelbase LS600H has got amazing laid back executive rear seating with plenty of legroom, which also came heated and cooled with a cooler box for food or beverages, air purifiers, body temperature sensors to support the four zone climate control and all the rest. These were really built to take on the S class. The D3 Audi S8 was sort of a competitor to the Lexus as we've just been speaking about but with a slightly greater focus on performance and sportiness as opposed to out and out luxury. If you wanted the luxury focus an A8L with the W12 engine would probably be the more relevant option but if you want power for under 10k this is the most you'll get from a bog standard Audi. This is probably the most ridiculous powertrain on the list a 5.2 litre V10 engine which makes 443 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.9 seconds which sounds very familiar to another Audi the first generation R8. It's not the same engine by any means but there are some similarities with the main difference of course being the one in the S8 is up front and tuned towards wafting rather than being an aggressive highly strung V10 more akin to the one in the R8. Aesthetically the differences between the S8 and A8 are actually pretty subtle outside of the badging alloys and a bit of extra flair instead it's almost focused more on being a sleeper than anything else. It's the quad exit exhaust that really give it away though and the exhaust note when you really put your foot down. I would say the interior is clad with nice premium material materials but it does feel a bit old in there given it arrived in 2006 and ran to the end of 2009. The performance features can't be questioned on these though with the 50-50 power distribution between the front and rear wheels from the Torsen diff and some serious optional extras like the floating carbon discs. To get into one of these you need to spend around £7,800 and 10k gets you a high mileage 2007 model. Watch out for carbon buildup on the inlet valves as a key issue and power steering pumps failing too. Next up we've got our first of three insanely powerful SUVs on this list for the money, starting with the first generation Range Rover Sport. On release, these were all the rage with wealthier families looking for something a touch smaller than a Range Rover but still big and brash all in, and with a greater focus specifically on road use rather than off road use, as is the history of the Land Rover brand. That doesn't mean they were bad off road though, they still retain the terrain response system you get on a Discovery 3, including settings for grass, gravel, snow, mud, rut, sand, rocks, and of course, road. I just wouldn't necessarily buy one for green laning. These come with a massive engine, a 5 litre supercharged V8 to be exact, producing 502 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6 seconds, so just a touch quicker than the Lexus. They weren't massively known for their reliability however, with the front diff in particular being a consistent point of failure, as well as air suspension issues which can be quite expensive for a full replacement, though it's worth mentioning the petrol V8 was definitely considered more highly than the diesel models. But if you were able to work past that and get yourself into an autobiography spec, which is possible under 10k, you're getting yourself a super luxurious and reasonably fast SUV for the money, which in the right exterior spec doesn't even look that old. I feel like these can either look insanely dated or pretty modern, and it's all down to how the original owner spec'd them, and how well they've been kept as well. Plus a private plate to hide the year doesn't hurt. If you want an old RRS, it will cost you around 9k at the bottom end, and for 10k we'll be looking at a 2010 model with 80,000 miles on it. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video, if you are then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. As I said, a thousand likes would do 5,000 pounds instead. 
and let me know in the comments down below what's the most powerful car that you've actually driven mine is probably the turbo s power to weight ratio probably the renault 5 maxi turbo group we rally car Love to hear yours. One of the greatest engines that has come out of Mercedes AMG is the 6.2 litre V8 that you find in multiple 63 AMGs of the late 2000s and early 2010s. It has to be one of the best sounding European V8s, if not one of the best sounding V8s of all time. It's aggressive, brash, and most importantly, naturally aspirated, so all of the power comes from petrol exploding under the pressure of a piston. And the cheapest car you can actually buy secondhand and get that engine in is this, the ML63 AMG, an early performance SUV which hosts that 6.2 litre V8 producing 502 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.8 seconds, 1.2 seconds faster than the range, so pretty sick for a family SUV. In fact, on release, the ML63 AMG was the most powerful naturally aspirated SUV in the entire world, and being completely honest with you, I don't think it's that bad looking either. Yes, it looks quite old, but the fact that it's a bit smaller than SUVs you see today, but then appears to have really oversized bumpers and the likes to make up for it, really gives it a lot more appeal to me and overall it looks a lot more focused and performant than most other SUVs of the same era. Add on the similar design principles to cars like the C63 AMG of the same era and you're onto a winner. If you want to get into one of these you'll need to spend a minimum of around £8,000 while 10k will get you a 2007 model with 100k on it. Battery drain from the boot latches and suspension related wear are the common issues but the catastrophic ones to be aware of are head bolt and oil leak issues. It's another Jaguar Land Rover group car taking second on this list, the XFR, which has a lot Lot of similarities to the XKR I mentioned in the 20k version of this video but with a bunch more practicality given it's an executive saloon built to compete with cars like the BMW 335i or equivalent. Like the XKR it's an Ian Callum design and genuinely pre and post facelift I think it's a great looking car as a result that you'll only get a pre facelift within our price range unfortunately. But being reasonable that's not the end of the world given I think this car looks way more modern than the S type it replaced even if the S type R was a bit of a beast in its own right. Right. This shares its engine with the Range Rover Sport, hence the specs are pretty similar. A 5 litre supercharged V8 that makes 502 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.7 seconds, making it the quickest car on the list, just beating the AMG. The R came with a beefier exterior too, most notably the vents on the bonnet and behind the front wheels, giving it quite an aggressive look. I actually think that the exterior is quite timeless, evidenced by how expensive the XFRS remains today as a pretty well sought after exotic car, but the interior is definitely looking pretty old school already, particularly on pre of models right now. It's a similar story to the Range Rover Sport in terms of price too, with 9k being around the minimum you'll need to spend to get into one, and 10k getting you a 2010 model with 95,000 miles on it. There are some build quality related issues on the interior that some owners have suffered with, particularly with leather coming away from the door cards or splitting around the seat and timing chains have also been a consistent problem with them. Taking the top spot on this list is literally a Turbo S, but not a 911 Turbo S, instead it's one of the cars that that actually saved the Porsche brand from financial ruin and enabled them to make the lovely cars we see today. The first generation KN Turbo S, which shares its platform with cars like the VW Touareg and Audi Q7, is by far the most powerful car on this list, and though its looks are becoming increasingly dated, it's pretty cool in my head that it's possible to have the Turbo S badge for under 10k. And though it's a bit old, that engine doesn't mess around, a 4.5 litre twin turbocharged V8 that makes 521 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5 seconds, so not quite as quick as the ML63, but not bad for the size still. This got the first Porsche V8 since the death of the 928 in 1995, and was of course the first ever SUV from the Porsche brand. Originally it split opinion by Porsche fanatics, for some it was perfect, they could swap out their other SUVs and family cars for a Porsche, so they could run a 911 and a KN alongside each other, while others hated the idea that Porsche could do anything but the 911. As has clearly been shown though, the KN was a great bet by Porsche, which has enabled them to reach a position pretty much at the top of the car market today. These are only around £7,000 the bottom end and for 10k we'll be looking at a 2006 model around 100k on the clock. They did have some aggressive problems like cylinder bore wear but the majority of issues were pretty trivial and once fixed, typically fixed for good. And so there you have it, thanks to you guys and the patrons for their support but now you've seen these 6 powerful cars under 10k you should check out these 10 head turners for the same price.